Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Many industries have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, but for nuclear, it's another story as reactors are all operating and managing to get their refueling outages done while social distancing. Joining me to discuss is Seth Gray, CEO of NASDAQ listed Lightbridge Corp. Seth, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thank you very much. Great to be with you. Seth, why are nuclear plants less susceptible to a disease shutting them down than some other industries? It largely is because of preparation. The nuclear plants are part of the nation's critical national infrastructure and actually have plans in place for dealing with pandemics. So the plants are actually usually run with social distancing, uh, you know, very often uh, have ways that they shift to people working on longer work periods and then longer off periods to reduce the number of people coming together. And the Nuclear Energy Institute, the trade uh, organization for the nuclear power industry, has done a really great job at coordinating the industry response of getting all the companies involved together, regularly comparing best practices and adapting. So for example, over 90% of the nuclear power plant sites in the US have reported a COVID positive worker. Um, But they've handled it all very well, making sure there's been no spread, going to quarantine, getting medical care if needed. So the the plants have been our reliable source of power. And and one reason they're such a critical part of the infrastructure is you look at the people we now call heroes, working in hospitals, working in supermarkets, producing the food, first responders. If they lose power, if the lights go out in the hospitals, if refrigeration goes out in the supermarkets, you know, we will lose our food supply, we will lose our medical care to a large degree. And the nuclear reactors 24 seven have been operating, not just through pandemic, but through storm, through fires, all of this happening at once and protecting their workers. And the last thing I'll say is the nuclear plants work very closely with the local communities. A a lot of people from the local communities work at the plants and the plants have done a great job preparing the plants for what they're doing during the pandemic, how they normally work, making sure people understand that these are hundreds or more of good jobs on the site, but they and their families are protected and very safe, even having that in their community. What does the rising price of uranium indicate to you? That nuclear is rising, that that's a commodity price, and the commodities are generally forward-looking in price. Investors want to buy low. So they think that nuclear power is on the rise. And the rising price of uranium means that investors think there'll be more nuclear fuel bought over time, partly because of growth in nuclear power around the world, and, and partly because there's new technology coming like like what Lightbridge is doing, that will actually use more uranium in producing more power and making nuclear even more economical and even safer. Seth, you had mentioned before about community safety and worker safety. How does the industry ensure that nuclear power and fuel technology are safe? Because it's gonna take a lot for the local community to really understand how that all works. The nuclear power industry in the U.S. is the safest large industry in the history of our country. Nobody has ever died at the plant site or off a plant site from radiation from anything nuclear. It has a remarkable safety record. And that's not just because of the safety of the technology and how well regulated it is by our safety regulator, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, but by the utilities, by the people who live there and work nearby who prioritize safety over anything. So as I said earlier, the plants are running during the pandemic, during storms, during fires. If there were any threat to safety whatsoever, those plants would be shut down. No one gets points toward their bonus, toward their work performance in this industry by keeping the plant operating. They get points for keeping it safe. And that's the number one focus. Yeah, it's an important distinction to make. And Seth, to wrap up here, tell us about the new contract for the gain voucher and what that is. 
Well, GAIN is the gateway for accelerated innovation in nuclear. It is a cash grant by the U.S. Department of Energy to the Lightbridge Fuel Project for work at Idaho National Laboratory, where the U.S. government is paying three quarters of our R&D costs. And we're using that money combined with our own engineering contributions to design an experiment to put our Lightbridge nuclear fuel into the advanced test reactor at Idaho National Labs, the largest test reactor that there is, and test our fuel and prove that it really will bring dramatic safety, non-proliferation, environmental, and economic benefits to the existing reactors, as well as new ones, large and small. So it's part of the U.S. government's broader bipartisan support for nuclear, partly to compete with Russia and China in international markets, partly to fight climate change, partly just for clean, resilient energy. And it's something specifically for Lightbridge can really demonstrate the benefits of our project. All right, Seth, appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. Thank you. And thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.